My name is Kelly Helton. I am the equal rights advocate for the tri-state freethinkers. When equal rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. By attempting to defund Planned Parenthood, you have declared war on women. I am here to tell you that we are not damsels in distress tied to the tracks. We are the train. <laughs> Those were the words I heard at the State House in Ohio. I was there because I hid in the back seat of my dad's car after my mom told me I couldn't go because it wasn't safe due to counter protesters. <laughs> when we got there, the counter protesters barged into the room and my dad and I got separated. I ended up by the podium right next to the senators and my dad was on the other side of the room. My mom saw me on the news with my dad nowhere in sight. <laughs> he got in so much trouble. <laughs> but at that moment, I decided I would no longer be quiet, and my voice would be heard. So at the next Planned Parenthood rally, I asked to speak. There I told the crowd I did not understand why people wanted to defund Planned Parenthood, deny, uh, deny birth control, restrict abortion, and refuse to teach comprehensive sex education that's medically and scientifically accurate. In the end, I realized that it wasn't me who did not understand those issues. The real problem was my legislators did not understand those issues. <laughs> my next opportunity came on International Women's Day. I expanded on my original speech to cover pay equality, and I asked the crowd the following questions. Why should I get paid less for the same job that my brother does when I clearly work harder than he does? <laughs> Why should women of color get paid even less than me? I then got an opportunity to do a speech for a Swiss TV special about the separation of church and state in our American public schools. In my choir class, we were singing religious songs. I was not comfortable singing these songs, and they shouldn't have been there in the first place. <coughs> I asked my dad what I should do, and he told me I should talk to my teacher, so that's what I did. My teacher didn't want to make me feel uncomfortable, and she knew who my dad was and didn't want to get sued. <laughs> In the end, she removed the religious songs. I wasn't the only student who felt this way, but I was the only student who was willing to stand up and say something. It is amazing what one person can accomplish if they stand up for the rights of others and speak out for those who cannot. I also had an opportunity to speak about atheism when David Silverman was visiting the Tri-State Freethinkers. My call to action was this. In order to change the world around us, we must first let the people around us know who we are. If I can stand up here and shout, I am an atheist, then perhaps you could come out of the closet so people realize they actually know an atheist. Yeah. <laughs> If everyone did this one simple thing, then maybe the next time I get on stage and shout, I am an atheist, no one will care. And how cool will that be? <laughs> I've even had the opportunity to testify at the Ohio State House about the six-week abortion ban. In school, I was taught that we have a government of the people, by the people, for the people. But when I look back and see 20 abortion restrictions in six years, it almost seems like Ohio is a government of the men, by the men, for the men, without any regard for women. <laughs> the committee asked me questions afterwards, and for the first time in a really, really long time, I actually think they listened. When I was asked to speak for the March for Science in Cincinnati, I felt I had an opportunity to set the record straight. I've had science teachers tell me that the Big Bang Theory and evolution are just theories and I can believe whatever I want. I want to let them know that the Earth isn't 6,000 years old and it isn't flat either. <laughs> I want to let them know that bringing a snowball to the Senate floor during winter does not disprove climate change. I wanted to let 
let them know that I want to get my vaccination information from places like Children's Hospital and not Jenny McCarthy. When I was asked to speak at the Women's March, I decided to pull no punches, and I would like to share parts of that speech with you now with some slight modifications. <laughs> First Timothy chapter, verses 11 and 12. A woman should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. I will no longer bow down to the patriarchy. And most of all, I will no longer remain silent. <laughs> I am an unapologetic, firebrand, feminist atheist who longs for the day when all religions are viewed as the superstitions they are. We have taken to the streets, and more importantly, we are marching to the polls. We will vote. And by we, I mean you, because I'm clearly too young to vote. <laughs> the goal is that you no longer have to choose between the lesser of two evils when you vote. Because progressive women are running for office in 2018. We are atheist voters, and along with the nuns, we are the largest voting bloc by religious affiliation. We need to draw a line in the sand and unite under one banner, and that banner is equality. We need to send a message. If you do not stand for equality, we cannot vote for you. Yeah. If we want equality for all women and all atheists, then we need to make sure all women and all atheists are represented. We need to ensure people of color and trans people not only have a voice, but have a seat at the table. United, we must stand. Or divided, we shall fall. Yeah. I was recently asked why feminists are so angry. And let me tell you what makes me angry. I am mad because I was told if I have sex before marriage, I am no better than pre-chewed chewing gum. I am mad because religious extremists are dictating my health care choices. And David Silverman, I am mad because atheists are afraid to use the word atheist. because my transgender friends can't pee in peace. <laughs> I am mad because my genitals should not dictate my pay grade. Yeah. I am mad because thoughts and prayers will not keep students safe. Right. Yeah. I am mad because people that have the power to vote are not using it to protect those who cannot. But most of all, I am mad because the homophobic, misogynistic racism and incompetence of some of our representatives in government. I want our representatives to know we are not asking for equality. We are demanding it. I want our representatives to know there will no longer be decisions made about us without us. We are atheist voters. We are the voice of reason. And we are the reason the world would be a better place because atheists care.
now for a man that I do not envy. <laughs> Jim G. Helton is the national field organizer for American Atheists. After attending the 2012 Reason Rally, he co-founded the Tri-State Free Thinkers and was appointed American Atheist Kentucky State Director. Under his leadership, Tri-State Free Thinkers adopted the highway in front of the Creation Museum in Ark Encounter and led a protest that received international attention. He played a key role in, in eliminating Gideon Bibles distributions in public schools and removing abstinence-only sex education. Mr. Helton's activism at the Creation Museum in Ark Encounter landed him appearances in the 2017 documentary from film Bill Nye, Science Guy, and the forthcoming documentary, We Believe in Dinosaurs. He has been quoted in countless news outlets, including the New York Times, Miami Herald, and the Washington Post. He is a fixture in local media and has given his interviews for international television specials in France, Switzerland, and elsewhere. And more importantly, he's Kelly's father. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jim Helton. So before I start, I give you a little bit behind the scenes. Kelly was originally supposed to go after me. In our production meeting, Dave said, I want her to go after me. And I said, i really rather go after me. He said, well, I don't want to follow Kelly. He's like, well, the alternative is you would have to follow me. And I'm like, I would much rather follow you, Dave, than Kelly. No offense. <laughs> but Dave is my boss, and obviously I lost that argument. <laughs> so I am the co-founder of the Tri-State Freethinkers. Uh, that's a little bit about me. In 2012, I had this idea. I came back from the Reason Rally, all motivated, all fired up, where I wanted to change the world. But I didn't know where to start, so I started in my own backyard, and I laid out a 10-year business plan to do that that could be replicatable around the country. And within five years, way ahead of schedule, we have done that. My clicker's not working. Wrong clicker? Try another one. Oh, there we go. So one of the first things I did as an activist is we adopted the highway in front of the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. I was very proud of this. And I do this at every convention, every talk, and it will never get old, by the way. Uh, what most people don't know is, I, you know, four years ago when we did this, I had the application, but the Creation Museum was actually a client of mine. So I didn't sign it because I knew that would cause me a world of hurt and financial problems. Uh, but as state director, I had the opportunity to get on stage in front of about a thousand people at American Atheist Convention, and I got up there and said, we just adopted the highway in front of the Creation Museum, and the place went crazy. <laughs> and then I got home and went, oh, shit. <laughs> so I signed it, and I am so glad I did. Needless to say, the Ark Encounter is not a client of mine anymore, and that is, job is long gone. Uh, so today what I want to talk to you about is I want to do a, re a quick recap of the future of atheist activism, which is what I presented at the conference last year. Then I want to talk about what we are actually doing now, and then so share some of the success stories and go into a little bit deeper dive of the ACES program, and then talk about what our directors and affiliates are accomplishing. In the future of atheist activism, we challenge everyone on what is an atheist issue. When we think of atheist issues, these are the things we traditionally think about. Government prayer, Gideon's Bibles in public schools, Ten Commandments, crosses on property. This is my favorite pastime. We love fighting these things. But the question I proposed is, what about this is issue? Dying with dignity. Is this an atheist issue? Yes. Yes. Who's behind this issue? Who, who is driving the bus and stopping this issue? What about sex education? Yes. What about LGBT? What a difference the years make. When I did this last year, you could hear a pin drop. Yeah. Abortion. Yeah. Yeah. Women's rights. Yeah. Science and history. Yeah. Racial justice. Yeah. So in defining definitions of determining atheist issues, I asked three questions. The first one is, who is behind the issue? Is it religion? If religion is trying to impose its belief on the people, that's step one. Step two, is this an equal rights issue? 
Are they trying to discriminate somebody? And if we had a true separation of church and state, would this issue go away? And on almost every single one of those issues, if we had true separations of church and state in this country, they would all go away, except for one, and that's racial justice. While the KKK is clearly behind racial justice, if we solve that problem, we would still have racial inequality in this country that would need to be addressed. But the rest of them would almost virtually be eliminated. Then there was one other question I want to pose this year. What if re religion is offered as the solution? So what am I referring to? Utah's governor asked people to pray for snow. Now, they did it again this year because it, they have evidence it worked last year when they did it. <laughs> did you know you can stop hurricanes if we would just ban abortion and gay marriage? Who knew? Thoughts and prayers will stop shootings. And God we trust will protect our children's schools. So the question is, are these atheist issues? When I came on to American Atheist, I didn't think I was going to be a weatherman. <laughs> I wasn't planning to talk about guns. And while American Atheist can't comment on every local jackass who tries to impose his religion on the public, but you can. Yeah. And not, let me change that. Not only can you, you should. You should be calling out these politicians as local activists, as local affiliates. And if you need help, we will help you. We'll help you with the press release. We'll help you with the media. We will help comment it. But it's much more powerful than a national organization talking about some local jackass than you in the actual county or city where they're from calling them out. We need evidence-based solutions, not superstition. We need to get out of the pubs and into the state houses. Well, I know it's a lot of people's favorite pastime to drink beer and bitch about religion. The bar tab downstairs will confirm my, my, my analysis. While we can do that, we must take action. And one of the things I'm very excited about, and Allison's going to come after, after me, our, our legal policy directors, we are currently tracking 165 bills across the country. The majority of them are negative. We are able to track bills we're supporting, opposing, and we can even provide written testimony so that you can testify. And if my daughter can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I'd like to share with you a couple bills in Oklahoma, uh, and this next one is my favorite. And I know I shouldn't have a favorite bad bill, but this one's my favorite. SB 1457, all wildlife found in this state is the property, no longer the state of the Almighty God. Now, this didn't make it out of committee, but I want you to think about this. Why I'm not an attorney, think if which gods would make claim to the animals. Would it be Thor, the flying spaghetti monster, Buddha? Like, and then they could claim that these are their animals and by their God, and they could do with them what they want. And then what if the state had to define which God had the right to them or which God they meant? Then if they meant one God, well, then it is out of violation. And what if somebody gets hurt by the animals? Then can I sue the Catholic Church? <laughs> so, I mean, this, I, I'm almost sad it didn't pass because the legal arguments on this would have been amazing. <laughs> Allison actually wrote a whole essay ready to go if this passed, and it never saw the light of day because it never went anywhere. But this is just some of the types of bills that are crazy across the country that people are pushing religion on the people. This next one's not so funny. And it is moving forward. It's SB 1140. What this does is, as an entity, religious organizations can receive public money and still discriminate. Let me say that again. Receive public money and then still discriminate on services. And we are seeing these all across the country. I wish I could tell you Oklahoma was unique, but it's not. Lots of states are doing this very type of thing. We have action out there on the iPads outside of this room where you can sign up for action alerts to be alerted. Our state directors and directors get alerts on every single bill in their state automatically through this tracking system. What are our answers? Some of our toolkits and presentations. These are some we've just developed in the last few months alone. For comprehensive sex ed, LGBT, Gideons, voter registration, government invocations, protest funding, and so many more that we have coming down the pipeline. 
We have toolkits, presentations, step by step. Now this isn't for the professional firebrand activist. These toolkits we're giving to the average person. We're seeing students deliver these presentations. We're going all the way down to the city council and school board level. No national organization that I know is providing support at city council and school board level policy. This is something you can do. At my son's school, the school board vote was 24 votes. I want to clarify so you understand what I'm saying. It wasn't decided by 24 votes, 24 votes total. If once you get outside the major city and we're only 20 minutes outside of Cincinnati, nobody's paying attention. Every school board meeting, I was the only one. The LA Times reported in the 1990s, the Christian right hijacked over 2,000 school boards. This is the space we need to be in. And I want to show you just a few examples of these presentations and what I am talking about. When it comes to sex education, think about this. There are only 13 states that require proper sex ed. Only 13. It's being taught by churches who holds religion is founded on the idea that a virgin got pregnant. Think about that for a minute. They're teaching abstinence only till marriage based on a religion that's based on a virgin getting pregnant. This is what they're teaching. And I should bring Kelly back up because she did this for me on, on Thursday, if you had a chance, way better than I can. So I'll give you all a quiz. When you think of sex, I want you just to shout out what words come to mind. What emotional effects of sex do you have? Just shout a few out for me. You, you guys aren't very good at this. You all failed. <laughs> so here are some of the effects. Guilt, disappointment, depression, sadness, worry, loneliness, loss of self-esteem. I didn't hear any of these out of you. Now, the only one, and this is my daughter's book. This is her book, screenshot from her book. Now, I'm going to give you disappointment. We've all been there, right? <laughs> so there's, there, there's one factual piece in here. But beyond that, the rest of this is crap. The results are obvious. Colorado gave free birth control and comprehensive sex ed. Their teen pregnancy, STI, and abortion rate fell by 40% almost overnight. Think about that. By 40%. It is legal in most states to tell children that babies come from a store dropped on your doorstep as long as you follow it up by don't have sex till you're married. It sounds ridiculous, but this is legal in our sex education system. And this is what we must fight. And having parents and students, I taught this to a preacher who then took it to a school board. We've removed abstinence only till marriage programs. They're harmful in 30 days. This is the effect you can have on school. When they ignore us, we ran against them and replaced them. This is probably our number one issue. Almost every issue we talk about, I can relate back to sex education. LGBT bullying, they're not teaching proper sex ed. They don't talk about gender identity, sexual orientation. Women's rights, equal rights, women aren't treated equally. They're treated like pre-chewed chewing gum. That's from the book also, this rights. Women's pay inequality. I was talking to a labor union, they go, how does sex have effect labor? You're not treating women equally. You're not paying them equally. I can tie death penalty. You have sex, you get pregnant without resources, leads to poverty, leads to crime. Almost every issue goes back to proper sex education. And churches are teaching their religion in this. <coughs> this is enemy number one that we must take on. Yeah. What about LGBT non-discrimination ordinances? You know, marriage equality passed and everybody said we won. And it was fantastic that it passed. But did you know let me ask you this. Can you be refused housing if you're part of the LGBT community? Yeah. What about business? I don't want to give you a piece of pizza. Can I refuse you? Yeah. What about fired? Yeah. Only 20 states protect from housing. Only 19 do for business are fired and only 20. That's it. It is still legal in this country to discriminate against the LGBT community. This is an issue we can take on. While federally, we might be in trouble. But these are city council levels. Some cities are so small. The one city I was speaking to about this, they had 49 households and one business. 
You know, some of these cities aren't so big. This is an issue we can work with partners and the LGBT community. And you know what happens when you work with the LGBT community? Odds are they're not that religious anyway. We, you know, these are good allies and partners. These are just a few of the type of bills that are being passed against LGBT discrimination. It became enemy number one. All these types of bills going all over the country on this very issue. What about Gideons? You know, we, if you notice, most of you probably didn't have Bibles in your room with the American Atheist Convention. Did you notice that? Yeah. We, we went to the front desk and I'm like, uh, my daughter needs a Bible. And they go, we can help you with that. And I go, that's unfortunate. <laughs> you know, the Gideon's Bibles, their sole purpose is to lead people to Jesus Christ. In their bylaws, when they pass out Bibles, my favorite line says, we can't appear to be preaching Christianity. I'm like, huh? Do you know they have over 20 distribution methods? But the one I'm going to talk about today is in public schools. They do on-campus, sidewalks, they get in schools. They're deceitful. Like, if I was a business and I wanted to go after a school, you would go after the superintendent, right? The principal. They say, don't do that. Go after a teacher. Go after a teacher's aide and just get it in there. But there's one way to stop the Gideon's Bibles where I've been super successful, even without the satanic temple. That's the nuclear option. <laughs> but if you don't feel like blowing everything up, there is one simple way. And this word for word is from their bylaws. If there is press or the appearance that there may be press, the Gideons cannot show up. Think about that for a minute. So we found out where they were going to be at five schools simultaneously and we set up with an atheist book to distribute. We contacted Fox and all the news with the headline, Atheists Descend on Public Schools. <laughs> they all showed up. The Gideons did not, and they refused to comment and said, we don't know what you're talking about. The school produced a letter, and the, and the news kept saying, this atheist affiliate claims that the Gideons are going to be here. Fox said it like 20 times. But at the end, the school produced a letter on the Gideon's letterhead with the request to be there on that day. You just need to find out when they're going to be, and they can't be there. The press is your friend in stopping the Gideon's Bible distributions. This one I'm also super excited about, Secular America Votes. We released this on Monday. And, and with national organizations, multiple organizations, we are doing a voter registration drive. Where as an affiliate of American Atheists, you can register people to vote in your community. Think about that. I love doing this presentation here because this is the only room that's going to get it right. Based on religious affiliation, what is the largest voting block? We are. But you could argue we're not a voting block. If you want to cater to the evangelicals, what issue do you have to bring up? And you got their vote. So my question is, what are our issues? If I went around this room and I didn't even get out of the first row, would it look something like this? Would any one of these issues be important to you? So if you were a politician and you just had to cater to this or this, which is easier for you to do? Do you know what the voter turnout for evangelicals was in this last election? 85%. Do you know what ours was? I'm embarrassed to tell you, so I'm not going to say. Nowhere close to that. Not even close. But what if we were single-issue voters? Do you know what all these issues have in common? They're an equal rights issue. What if every one of these issues on our talking points, we said, this is an equal rights issue. They are trying to discriminate against us, and we went into this. Like Kelly said, if we united under one banner, and that banner was equality then we can't vote for you. That's a single message. We become a single issue voter. While they're anti-abortion and discrimination, we're equal rights, they discriminate. And with the voting block that we have and the numbers that we have, we can change the entire country on this simple thing. <laughs> but we need you to do that. We need you to get out with your local groups, get involved with your local groups, become affiliates, and get out there and register people to vote. We must register everybody. Even if a creationist comes up and says, I want to register, you say, sign here. 
but we can choose where we set up our tables. <laughs> we can't be strategic on that. What about government invocations? Now, Greece versus Galloway came down a crazy decision. Nick was talking about this earlier, where it is legal to pray before government meetings. But there was a couple key parts of this decision. They can't proselytize, and atheists are allowed to deliver invocations. So now we are allowed to... Who, who here has delivered a humanist invocation? This, <laughs> this guy right here. So I'm going to share the story. Justin Scott is our Iowa State Director. He helped write this program along with the Florida group. Those are probably the two groups that I've seen do the most on invocations. But the story here is interesting. He did this all over Iowa. But Justin, this one mayor, would not let Justin speak. It was only Christian prayers. He refused to let him speak. And he kept getting in the press, kept getting in the news. They just would not let him speak. This mayor didn't care. He was up for election, but he was running unopposed. One gentleman, who was not an atheist, got upset about this and said, I've had enough. I'm going to run against this guy. He is discriminating against people in his own community. Write me in. And Justin, correct me, didn't he win by 60% of the votes? Oh. As a write-in candidate. Because of what he did right here. Give Ju Justin stand up. This is the power of one individual, just like Kelly speaking up, Justin doing this. This was one person, one person in one group making policy change. When he got elected, he met with Justin and said, Justin, I would like you to deliver an invocation. And Justin says, I'd rather not. <laughs> He's like, excuse me? He's like, wouldn't it be better for everybody if we just didn't have any of this? And keep in mind, this person was not an atheist and agreed and eliminated all prayers from city council. <laughs> Anybody hear the Ark Encounter? <laughs> One of the things we're, we are working on right now is protest planning. Now, I've been involved in protest planning in a larger pot to Jen Scott. Jen Scott, stand up. Give her a big round of applause. I met Jen Scott on a disc golf course because she was too intimidated to come to a meeting with 50 people. And she had this idea that she would get to know us and in a year she might get involved. And there I pitched this idea that I think we should put up this billboard called Genocide and Incest Park in front of the Ark Encounter. <laughs> that was our first 10 minutes. She tried to talk me out of it in previous conversations. That didn't go so well for her because within a few months she was on our board and then an officer shortly thereafter. <laughs> and then when I removed the word drunkenness off the billboard, she goes, you can't do that. <laughs> the Ark Encounter is problematic on so many levels. We got international press on this. Anybody see the Bill Nye film and see this in there? Yeah. That was one of six documentary film crews there. That was one of several countries that ended up showing up after this as well. They get $18 million in state tax incentives. 75% of the real estate tax goes to pay back their junk bonds. They tax not just the ARC employees, but all employees in that area have to pay 2% of their paychecks to pay back the ARC Encounter junk bond loan. They were given over 100 acres for free. I'm not done. Over $100,000 in cash. And it continues. The separation of church and state is ridiculous. How did they do this? They built the entrance gate as a for-profit company that can receive government money, but the boat is a non-profit company that can discriminate and take tax-free donations. <laughs> Elections matter. The transportation cabinet and the governor were opposing this and said, you can't discriminate if you take our money. We elected Matt Bevin as governor. He replaced the transportation cabinet overnight. They ruled on it, and Matt said, hey, I'm good with this. We're not going to, we're going to let him go. Atheists can't work there. Catholics can't work there. If you're single, you have to sign a vow of chastity saying you won't have sex until you're married. I was doing an interview, I think it was with Vice News, and I was doing another one with the UK, and I went down these talking points, and they said, Jim, you're one of the most amusing and funniest interviews I've ever done, but I need you to tell me the facts. And I'm like, fact check me and call me back tomorrow. They called me back and were like, holy shit, Jim, you weren't joking. <laughs> like, 
This is real. My favorite interview I've ever done on the Ark, and I've done more than I can count, was with Seth Andrews. Because as I was speaking, if you Google it on the Ark Encounter, as I'm talking and every claim I make, he pops up an article or, or the, the actual bylaws and fact checks me through every bit of the conversation. I can't make this shit up. <laughs> but one thing we've been able to do through protests, we've done so many protests and rallies. If you're an organization in Cincinnati and you want to protest, you call me. You know, people would call me and say, Jim, do you have a portable podium? I'd say yes. And then I'd go on Amazon, $250, two-day shipping, done. We'd slap our logo on it. <laughs> do you have safety vests for marshalling? Yes, I'd order those. No matter what they asked, my answer was yes. And then we end up being protests, rallies, and work with every organization. So when we, there's 15,000-person rallies, 10,000-person rallies, do you know as an atheist, myself, my daughter, anyone in my organization in Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati, can speak at any meeting? We're not fighting for a seat at the table. They're asking us, will you speak? Because we've gotten so good at this piece. If you're not out there protesting and rallying, you're missing out. The one thing Donald Trump gave us is a good time every weekend and every evening protesting. <laughs> one of the best things that came out of this is too is Planned Parenthood unofficially was there the first one, helping us because they are great at protesting. On the second one, they said, the American Atheist Affiliate has been such a good partner of ours, we must be there officially. And the Planned Parenthood higher up said, what's our angle in protesting New York, though? I understand you want to support somebody else. They go, they're spending tens of millions of dollars of government money on this ARC at the same time they're defunding women's health care. And they said, go. <laughs> they had a booth there. And we didn't plan this. But all the American Atheist employees that were there went and grabbed Planned Parenthood signs, and we all marched two by two to the ark. All the Planned Parenthood staff grabbed American Atheist signs and walked up in this picture. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this, too, is the state director for Planned Parenthood got up on stage and thanked us for all the hard work and what we shared. And she said this one statement, when equality is under attack, atheists show up. <laughs> we have turned that into protest signs, and we will mail those for free in transgender colors to any American affiliate who's going to protest, rally, march, pride. We will send those to you for free. You know what my budget is? I don't have one because we want you hitting the street for as many as you need. <laughs> Come see me afterwards. I will show you a bunch of those. So the ACES program, which stands for activism, community, education, and social. This is the secret to my success. If you're going to learn anything about my talk, it's the next slide that I want you to take a picture of and see. When we looked at groups around the country that were doing the best, they followed this formula. You know what the number one reason people join atheist groups? Social. <laughs> and drinking. <laughs> Do you know what the number one reason groups go to die? Social. Because they don't offer anything else. Eventually, you get too drunk and you can't drink no more. Believe it or not, it's a thing. <laughs> you need to do, be doing activism. We've talked a ton about activism. You need to do community service. The Tri-State Freethinkers hosted over 277 events in 2017. They were the American Atheist Affiliate of the Year for all the activism we did. Everything I showed you is what that affiliate has done just in the last few months. They did 53 community service projects and won a Foundation Beyond Belief Award for community service and give me food, give me shelter. Educational meetings, bringing in speakers like this to you. We have a speakers bureau now at American Atheist, which will be open in a couple weeks, which you can get speakers at reduced cost or no cost from our directors to come speak to your groups. And social events, you know, creating that sense of community. That's the one thing when I started five years ago that I said the church had on us, a sense of community. I don't think they can no longer claim that is the sole thing. We have that sense of community. We've built that sense of community, and we need to spread this all across the country so that we have an atheist community. <laughs> I want to give you an example of what this looks like. This is a slide. 
If you get anything out of my talk, this is it. And this is a real life example we do every single month, but with Planned Parenthood. So have you ever been to an educational meeting where somebody talks about abortion or what religion's doing and it pisses you off? Anybody attend one of those talks? All the time. And then the next month, you hear the next topic and they tell you about how religion sucks and what's going on. Does that piss you off? And then you go the next month and what has changed? Nothing. I got tired of going to these talks that pissed me off and nothing was happening. The other thing we have is two issues. When I talk to groups around the country, they all have two issues. They have one leader doing everything, and they're broke. This ACES program solves both of those problems. So think about this for a second. We brought in Planned Parenthood, and we said we had a, speak a speakers bureau, education. That was their job to bring in topics. And they brought in Planned Parenthood to talk about abortion, women's reproductive rights, all these types of things. We set up an education meeting with them. Our atheist meetings are not our meeting. Even though we do it at the same place, same time, everything's the same, we always have a partner. We use Meetup, but we also post those monthly meetings on Facebook as a joint event. So it was Planned Parenthood brought their members and the American Atheist Affiliate brought their members to this educational meeting. Our activism committee, we did state house protests, lobbying, letters to the postcard, phone banks. Every Monday we did phone banks for two months with them. So we were doing activism with them. We did community service for a women's shelter. We collected two truckloads of hygiene products at a protest to deliver to that shelter. Our social, we did movie nights where we did have dinner and drink and bitch about religion when it was all done and had a great time. Do you know what happened with this? Our members became their members. Their members became our members. When I walked into a Planned Parenthood the first time, they go, I'm an atheist. When I walk in there now, it's, hey, Jim, we're all atheists. <laughs> and they're not afraid to use it. This is a game changer. It helps you get multiple people involved. Because people's passion, guess what? I'm a firebrand activist. Other people like puppies. They like feeding the puppies or helping the homeless. They're a community service person. Uh, we have some intellectuals here that like education meetings. Or we do have the, you know, drink and bitch about religion people. This appeals to broad range. We have many women in our group. We have many ages from Kelly's age to retired. The ACES program creates a true sense of community that creates action and change. And this is the one slide I want you to remember. We will teach this program all around the country. We have directors that we're teaching to. You can appoint somebody within your group to learn this program. The power of the ACES, if you're running for office in Cincinnati, you call the atheist and ask for an endorsement. I can't give it to you because we're a nonprofit. But the fact that politicians at the atheist meeting are asking to speak at our meeting. Senators are asking to speak at the atheist meeting. Think about that. It's not where we're going, we can't get meetings. They're asking to come to the atheist meeting. When nuns are doing an action, they come to our meeting. Catholic nuns are asking for our help because they know they need the power of atheists to make change in the community of where we are. I think I'm collecting them. I have three that love me so far. <laughs> and my last slide, because I'm running out of time, is I want to acknowledge some people in this room and talk about this. When I came on in 2017, we had 10 state directors. And when I mean 10 state directors, that means if you were willing to email me or call me back, I, call, I counted that in that 10. I was very happy when I got those emails. We created a new position of regional directors, which cover multiple states. We have Arn Ra and Jen Scott doing that. We now have 19 state directors, 19 assistant directors in cities, and a total of 40 directors in less than a year. We are well on our way not only to putting a state director in every state, we want an assistant director from every affiliate in every city in the country. We have over 200 affiliates with only 11 local partners. Our number, remember I said we only had 10 state directors, our affiliates out of the 200, we have only maybe a dozen we communicate with. Our goal for 2018 is to change that and have that same effect like David said, we are funding 
local groups, with resources, anything you need. My job is to say yes way more than it is to say no. The answer to our problems and what we need to do is the affiliates. It is you in this room. It is the local groups at a true grassroots action that is going to change what we do. That's my ask. We need volunteers willing to speak at state houses, willing to become directors, become involved. And the last thing I'll tell you of what this movement needs is more of this. While some people have successfully managed to ignore us, they cannot ignore our students, and they don't. Our students have a voice. They are the voice of reason in a room full of unreasonable adults. People listen to them. We need to give them the mic, give them the stage. Like Mandiza said, shut up and listen and let them speak, and they will change the future, and the future is bright with our students. Thank you, everybody.